Thank you for joining me for this edition of Week in Review. You know, in Isaiah 21, God told Isaiah this. He said to set a watchman on the wall and let him shout what he sees. Well, I, like many other Christian leaders, we're in that lookout position as sons of Issachar. We understand the times and we're asking God, help us know what we're supposed to do so we can encourage the people of God. I want to share with you seven leaders throughout history and one word captures what they imparted in their day. Stay with me. By the time you're listening to this video, Donald Trump, former president, will be facing indictment that will capture, do you know how many? Close to 90 felony charges, 90 felony charges. The whole intention is get him off the table, get him out of the way. He's blocking something. Well, what did Donald Trump say? He said this, it's the final battle. Do you know that a Democrat, Alan Dershowitz, and he's a Harvard Law professor, brilliant man in his 80s, he just released his new book. And you know what it's called? The Final Battle. Last week, Franklin Graham, he was interviewed on national TV. And what did he say? We're about to lose our country. You say, this is hyperbole. Are we getting a little too dramatic? No. Cal Thomas, a conservative commentator for 50 years, he said, we now see the contributing factors to the collapse of a nation. Sean Hannity and Bill O'Reilly, two commentators. Sean has the, the, the largest audience of anybody on a radio talk show. And he and historian Bill O'Reilly both said the same thing. With what's going on with the Biden administration and Hunter right now, we are now facing the most serious presidential scandal in United States history. You say, Larry, what are we supposed to do? Well, I think if we study history, we can see leaders who were courageous, but something characterized their lives. And I want to share that with you because the time is urgent and this is not a time to be passive. It's a time for, in one word, perseverance. You know, Martin Luther stood up to the corruption and the upheaval in his day. His life was on the line. He literally had to flee to a castle where he, you know, tucked away because they were going to kill him as a heretic. But if you read his writings, you see he was telling people we must persevere. How about this one? William Wilberforce in the late 1700s, we know that this was a great man of God and he got the burden from the Lord to see the abolition of the slave, slave trade. He was counseled by John Newton. You say, John Newton, you mean the one that wrote uh, Amazing Grace? Yeah, maybe you even saw the movie. But you know, Wilberforce needed encouragement. And John Wesley, when he was on his deathbed at 88, can you imagine this? He wrote him a letter. And that letter stayed in the Bible that William Wilberforce had because for 46 years, he had to persevere to see the abolition of the slave trade. And then three days after the Slave uh, Abolition Act was put into effect, three days later, Wilberforce went to be with the Lord. Now, I'd like to read to you just something. Do you know what Wesley wrote to him? These are the words. Look at it on the screen. This is the words he said to him. He said, unless the divine power has raised you up, I see not how you can go through your glorious uh, enterprise in, uh, in ob opposing the abominable practice of slavery, which is the scandal of England and human nature. Unless God has raised you up for this very thing, you will be worn out by the opposition of men and devils. But if God be for you, who can be against you? Are all of these together stronger than God? Then he said to persevere and go forward in the name of God and in the power of his might. Well, Wilberforce was encouraged, persevere. Do you know one of my heroes in history is Chuck Colson. And I have on the wall in my study um, a letter that I received from Chuck Colson. And I see it all the time. And you know, Chuck Colson said, we can be discouraged 
but we battle that. But one thing as Christians we must never do. We have to persevere because we are never to be despondent or ever cynical. Believe God that he wants to intervene if we'll cooperate with what he has. How about Abe Lincoln? Abe Lincoln, imagine in his day with the Civil War and then bringing the Emancipation Proclamation. But what did he say and what did he demonstrate as a courageous man? Perseverance. That's the one word. There's even a book out. I've read it recently. It's called what? It's called The Secret of Success is Not a Secret. And what is the secret? Perseverance. How about Martin Luther King Jr.? If you study his life, Martin Luther King Jr. in the 50s wrote his biography, autobiography, and he told how he woke up one night and he said, I was gripped by fear. I couldn't go on. And if you ever read the words, they're just so powerful. He said, I, I was threatened. He received a call. Somebody said that basically his life was going to be over. But you know what? He said, God spoke to him. He heard the voice of Jesus and Jesus told him, go on. Don't give up. You must persevere. Well, that man changed history. In my study, I have a big poster of Martin Luther King Jr. And what does it say? It says on there, it says, uh, darkness will not overcome darkness. Only light can. And hatred cannot overcome hatred. Only love can. But he was a man who persevered. What about Chuck Colson? Well, Chuck Colson was the one that, you know, was in the White House, the hatchet man. But he said, we've got to persevere in difficult times. He brought those words. And that's why I look at the letter he sent me. I'm going to tell you another one. How about Ronald Reagan? Ronald Reagan went to the wall there where we saw, you know, him d decree. And he said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this Berlin Wall. And he spoke encouraging words to us. And he said, we have to stand up for freedom or the children and our grandchildren will one day ask us, what was it like in America when there was freedom? Reagan was an encourager. One more individual would be Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Now, Bonhoeffer in the 30s saw what Hitler was doing. And just like today, we see corruption in government. And he saw the decadence and he spoke up. It cost him his life. He was martyred. You know, in my room, I have Bonhoeffer, the biography by Eric Metaxas. And when you read books like this and you study the lives of these people, and we want to be students of history, do you know what? You start to see we must persevere. So I want you to watch this video today and recognize the culture is coming apart. The skyrocketing violence and crime and the economic disaster, the propaganda, the LGBTQ agenda, wokeism, it's a scary time. It's not a time to ignore and just say, well, wait for the next election. Everything will be all right. It's all cyclical. No, we're blowing an urgent uh, trumpet right now. We're called to pray, turn from our wicked ways, and call by God to persevere. Watch. To excel at anything in life, we have to handle adversity and persevere when it's easier to quit. Now, Calvin Coolidge once said this, nothing in the world will take the place of persistence. Talent will not. The world is full of unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve the problems of the human race. Now, 2,000 years ago, Jesus told a parable about a sower and planting seed, and he said success came by persevering. Now, my career spans about 43 years in vocational ministry. I've written nine books, a bestseller, spoke to NFL, professional teams, crowds of people, 25,000 at a time. I'm not boasting, but I want you to know I've had to persevere through multitudes of setbacks, betrayals, uh, financial reversals, physical problems. I've even lost the sight in one of my eyes. So let's take some time right now and draw some inspiration from the lives of others that persevered. How about Howard Schultz, the CEO of Starbucks? He founded the, the corporation in 71, but 16 years later, the company had fewer than 10 stores. Today, they have 18,000 stores, over 60 countries, more than 200,000 employees, but he persisted. Stephen Jobs, he was an orphan. He was adopted. He worked on electronics in a garage. He dropped out of college, and then he spent 10,000 hours preparing for making the Apple computer. Later, he was even fired, but he persevered. How about Meryl Streep? She's sometimes called the best actress alive. Why do you send me this pig? She is so ugly. That's what the director said when she came for her first audition. But today, what? She has three Academy Awards, 16 Oscar nominations, and 23 Golden Globe nominations. 
Now, not too long ago, a dad found his children were bored with the Bible. They didn't want to listen. So he thought, well, maybe if I paraphrase it, they'd listen. So he persevered in paraphrasing the Bible for more than 16 years to make it readily understandable. He was barely able to speak for almost 15 of those years. He was rejected when he was done by five publishers. So he published it himself. He began Tyndale House Publishing. And today, the Living Bible, 40 million copies worldwide. How about Abe Lincoln? He lived a life of perseverance amidst difficulties. In 1831, he failed in business. And then almost every year after, he was defeated for legislature, failed in business, his sweetheart died, he suffered a nervous breakdown, he was defeated for speaker, defeated for elector, he was defeated for Congress again, defeated for Senate, defeated for vice president, again he was defeated for the Senate. But in 1860, he was elected the President of the United States. Now, one of the greatest Christian leaders in history, Paul, said these words, Forgetting what lies behind, straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on. If you've been tempted to quit, are you ready to get back in the race? Hey friends, if you felt this video was helpful, make sure you like and subscribe so you get notified once new videos become available. Thanks.